lights upon the midnight dreary, while I ponder, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only this, and nothing more. Distinctly, I remember, as in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember brought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly, I wished the morrow. Vainly, I had sought to borrow from my books a curse of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels named Lenore, nameless here forevermore. silken sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, to the still beating of my heart, I stood repeating, tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. This is it, and nothing more. My soul grew stronger, hesitating, and then no longer. Sir, I said, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly That I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door. Darkness there and nevermore. Deep into the darkness peering, long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken and the stillness gave no token, and the only words there were spoken was the whispered word, Lenore. This I whispered, and the echoes murmured back the words, Lenore, merely this and nothing more. Into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning, soon again I heard a tapping somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see then what threads in this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment and this mystery explore. Tis the wind and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter, when with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of saintly days of yore. Not the least of the incense he made me, not a minute he stopped or stayed me, but with mine of lord or lady perched above my chamber door, perched upon the bust of Pallas just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird, beguiling my sad fancy into smiling by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore. Though thy crest be shown and shaven, though I said art sure no craven, ghastly grim and ancient raven wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me why thy lordly name is on the night's plutonium shore, quoth the raven nevermore. Much I marvel this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevant. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or 
I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing. To the fowl, whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's blue core. This I, and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining, on the cushions, velvet lining, that the lamplight floated o'er, but whose velvet violet lining with the lamplight gloated o'er. She shall press. Take the 
I form from off my door, quoth the raven, nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting, on the pallet, bust of pallet, just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all the seeming of a demon that is dreaming, and the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul from out that shadow lies floating on the floor, shall be lifted nevermore.